group of geniuses, luckily we've got them here, to uh, address these softer issues of how do you build or develop or foster or encourage that culture so that these changes become accepted, uh, they create enthusiasm. Uh, I'm sure you've all uh, seen examples of what to do and what not to do. Any war stories you'd like to share about fostering culture? I, I guess I'd just jump in. I think there are lots of smart and good IT leaders in this room and, and, and about today. And no doubt you, you will probably have a, you know, a, an IT team, a technology team that um, wants to keep pushing, is engaged, is really interested in trying new things. People entering technology careers today, if you're not a kind of a learner by kind of natural behavior, you, you, you're potentially making the, the wrong career choice with, with the rate of change. I guess uh, I see the bigger challenges in the, uh, around true transformation is where you're trying to foster a culture across silos. So less potentially worried about, I mean, don't get me wrong, you will always have those looking after legacy systems and whatnot. There's a, you know, potentially some hidden boroughs of, of, of kind of pets and cattle type mentality. But I think the biggest challenge around transformation fundamentally sits with the changing culture that has to be driven across departments, not just in terms of different lines of business that consume IT, but other general and administrative functions that enable the business to run faster, um, and also the cultures around decision making. So we have you know, talked about at length, both I think sort of previously amongst ourselves, but also in the industry about big transformation projects and looking to make very big decisions and do very big lumpy things versus being comfortable with a more, I probably don't like the word agile as much as you like the word journey, but a more agile approach to decision making which deals with uncertainty but allows things to move much faster with more uncertainty where perhaps, as Daniel, you mentioned earlier, you haven't done all the design up front, you know, as an example. So that's where I see the biggest cultural challenge at the moment. And those customers that I work with that embrace it uh, tend to go kind of all in with making sure that all departments are lining up besides uh, under all of the things that need to change. And we, I used that example of common language earlier. I met with one uh, CIO and we were looking, They we just sort of migrated them into a AWS from a traditional on-prem environment. Um, they are across sort of 30 countries and each of the 30 countries could effectively be considered a, you know, a separate business. So we'd done the first six countries and they were trying to work out how to do the others. And the challenge we faced was, for example, is legal didn't understand the, the technical language that underpinned the new technology base. The in-country country managers from a sort of a, a managing director, general manager level didn't understand it. And one of the things that we talked about, for instance, was taking yeah, whether it's that cloud provider or another cloud provider, and just doing a basic level of business education around here is the new language of, of, of IT, AKA the widgets that you buy, um, so that when we come to the table to make a decision around a cost, a design, you know, some of those business fundamentals that you're traditionally going to, to make, um, you're comfortable with those decisions because you understand the language. Um, the other, th the thing that I would throw into that is, is that's a real challenge and that was self-evident in, in a dinner that I was at a few months ago where one of the CIOs put on the table kind of a wish list which said, I wish the CEO would spend as much time understanding this new technology when I bought it to them as they would the new finance mechanism when the CFO sat down with them to talk about some kind of refinancing. And I thought that was a really, really interesting, you know, intentionally contentious point, but it's really valid, right? You know, culture comes from top down. Um, and CEOs, COOs and CFOs, as much as CIOs, have to uh, value all of the change that's got to occur and value the new language, the, the new language that we're going to bring them and, and the new uh, mechanisms that we're going to want to put in place. The other element as well related to people is training. And one of the things that I've seen before with big transformation projects is that that's really forgotten about because the focus has been on um, the implementation, is the design right? Are you going to be testing this thing properly? Is it going to get delivered on time? And then it's launched and suddenly you realize no one really knows how to use it. That has to be absolutely fundamentally part of the project plan um, to, to cover off those sort of important people issues. I, I want to pick up on that, that really interesting point around 
you launch something and no one knows how to use it. Mm. And there is a, there's a push and a pull to that in terms of you could deliver all of the training in the world and it doesn't go in or people turn up and they check off, check out, they hop on their phone, they do email while they're in the training. So you've done all of the things that mm. the textbook says to do. The biggest challenge that you have is making them want to be trained, making them buy into why for them personally on a very personal level for that new system. And that is the, that's the difficulty, I think. Um, and one of the challenges around what we're talking about from a kind of continuous transformation perspective and the fact that change is the constant is you're constantly having to figure out that why is it real for that individual at that point in time. Whereas when we used to do sort of the larger Bing Bang stuff, you'd figure it out once and then you would just drive that for six months, but you're almost having to figure out that new benefit paradigm every month, every quarter. Yeah, there is, there is no one organizational culture. That's the problem, right? There's a culture in every team, often in every floor, every country. And, and so, the, and, and I'm not necessarily certain it's top down, right? I think culture is, as I said, it's, it's a very localized kind of problem. And frequently I find that, you know, say you get a small team, they will, they won't talk about individuals in other teams, they'll talk about labels. So they might blame a supplier or they might blame finance or HR, not the person. And until you break down those barriers, you'll never get cross-functional kind of buy-in, you'll never get an understanding of why you need those end-to-end -end kind of changes that we've been talking about. Because it's like, well, I live in my, eco you know, my little ecosystem here, this is all I know. And, and we're a little clique and we're going to have our little culture and we're going to go to lunch at 12 o'clock because that's what we do and then we have you know we're very localized and it's their fault not ours and so often you find that, you know everybody's up for change because they think you, they, you mean the other people not them right we don't need to change do we because it's their fault whose fault well HR well who in it well, HR. Oh. Breaking down the silos, and the, 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 the ownership is so critical in terms of the cultural change and actually calling it up. I, it, it, what, what you were talking about uh, brought, brought another example, the two examples actually, w one of which is uh, like, you know, the uh, introducing DevOps or moving to the cloud and then moving to uh, continuous uh, deployment, yeah, continuous integration. And then you have the QA, the QA team saying, well, this is stuck with DevOps, or uh, the DevOps team saying, well, uh, it's QA didn't do their job. That's where, you know, an example of the, the, the siloed organizational nature within, within an IT or a digital we, team. Within a new world, right? Within a new world. Where, where you shouldn't have silos, yet yeah. we still have them, and labels. Yeah. And well. actually breaking it down and actually saying, you know, actually it's, this is an empowered product team and getting towards that little unit that actually can execute change is, is really where we, where, you know, when, when we say, you know, breaking down the silos and breaking and being more cross-functional. So that's, that's one example that, uh, that, that sprang to mind when I, and the other example is around, you know, the communication of a journey. So uh, it's, uh, I, I recall going in and saying, you know, the North Star is we need to automate, yeah? We need to stop doing manual effort. The consequence of that North Star message was I saw, I've seen the attrition in the uh, QA team rise exponentially because the manual, yeah. manual QAs were saying, well, that, that's, so I don't have a job anymore. So it, 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 it's, it's really interesting to, uh, and, and, and easily uh, traps you fall in through. I think it's interesting when we, we talk about business transformation, right? And one of the, you get some classic examples nowadays, which is one, you know, if, you, if you're in an organization that there's a lot of M&A, right? The acquired company does not want to comply with the group standard, right? Because they are, again, they have their own culture, right? They're, they're, they're very resistant to being sucked into the bigger picture. Mm -hmm.